basically once denim becomes a thing. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though. I got myself a denim covered uh, paladin. <laughs> no, no, please, no. <laughs> you can't wash. You can't wash that outfit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna. You just... gotta get it wet. You gotta break it in. It's, it's just a hassle for everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna draw this. <laughs> Gonna draw <laughs> the denim paladin. The denim paladin. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this just best genus from my hero? Yeah, this, this is point? basically best genus from my hero of academia. Just a reminder: this is a spoiler-heavy podcast. Different series that require a spoiler warning will be in the description. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gaming Theater Podcast. Today's episode is going to be a very special one about costuming and aesthetics with the entire Final Fantasy series. Here to help me out is going to be a few guests of mine, so let me just get us introduced. Once again, I am Leo, your host, also known as the Geek Scorpio. And over here we have... Hi, my name is Dean Dane. I'm a Twitch streamer and TTRPG enthusiast. Hey, I'm Kate. Uh, I go by K.O. Glasson online. I'm an artist, digital artist, cosplayer, crafter, all around crazy person. <laughs> My name is Liz. Uh, I go by Zombie Hand. And I am an artist, cosplayer, what do I do? Video gamer. <laughs> and yeah. I do a lot with uh, Gaming Theater Presents. I feel like theirs were better than mine. It's not fair. <laughs> I'm Sam, also known as Moon Testicle. I've been cosplaying for over 12 years. I also do film and editing for a local wrestling company. And I paint and I sew whenever I feel like it. So yeah, happy to be here to talk about it. I gotta say, y'all are freaking talented. And it's a super oh, delight to dang. know all of you on here. Aww. I, I, no, like, no joke, like cosplay goals among other things among other things but like y'all are some very talented people well thank you dane except when it comes to video games well <laughs> that's fun for different reasons okay, i still dane. super believe story in story mode yes yeah, yeah yeah hey there's no shame no shame in the easy difficulty no no shame at all all right now before we get started let's take a quick trip to the magical merch booth But here we are in the Magical Merch Booth. In this Magical Merch Booth, we have some Final Fantasy-based costumes, but mostly what we have is a bit from our fellow bard over here to just uh, have advertisement and notes about what's upcoming in November. Typically in November, Gaming Theater, and a lot of our cast, it's with Gaming Theater, will do several different... Um, streaming events and such with uh, the charity Extra Life. So keep an eye out on that, X or Twitter and uh, Facebook, where announcements will be for everyone who's doing Extra Life this year. Or I'm going to be running something for Extra Life as well for gaming theater, but I do know that Dane and Liz both do something for Extra Life each year as they stream. Heck yeah. And when that'll happen will be announced. November 4th for me. November TBD for for me november 4th is generally game day for um extra life and i will most likely be doing another scream stream Ooh, that sounds fun thank you that's what i did last year or wait and did i do the scream stream last year and alan wake the year before that <laughs> it kind of runs together went. to be honest yeah after a while anyway scream that stream is really said, fun just because I absolutely love it. Uh, if you ever want to get involved, we're not sponsored, but if you want to get involved with Extra Life, check out their page. Uh, they accept all people. Helps yeah, you can kids. do all sorts of things. Um, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, 100% of the donations go to a really good cause. Yeah. We do a lot of our stuff in November. However, Extra Life goes on all year round. So don't have to restrict it for these things. That's true. And you can do anything. It doesn't have to be video games. It can be tabletop, sewing, crochet, whatever. Whatever you want it to be, uh, you can raise money to help sick kids. Yep. Now, with that being said, let's get 
back to the show. Here we are back on the podcast show. Now, with that, the subject matter of today is basically about Final Fantasy and costuming. So, with this, Final Fantasy has been, as a series, probably the biggest RPG series of all time, hands down. I think the only thing that's more well known as as a Final Fantasy, and even that's debatable, is Dungeons and Dragons. That being said, though, we as fans tend to cosplay things that are based upon the aesthetics or the likes of those RPGs that we like. And Final Fantasy is no stranger to that. If you go to a convention, somebody is going to be dressed from a Final Fantasy game. Usually it's the, the latest one, but not always. And for them, knowing the art style and the aesthetics and the things that they have to put together for that really help out. Also is a pain for a lot of cosplayers when they realize that there's like a new version of this picture that they've been working up out for the last like, what, year on my costume and then all of a sudden, oh no, it turns out I'm missing a detail. That never happens. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it was just today. I was looking at a picture of Tifa and I said to her, wait, 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 there's a strap on the back of that thing? Oh, man. Oh, her purple <laughs> dress from the remake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the sexy purple dress, not the other purple dresses. They're, they're all nice. Honestly, the Chung Sam would have been better if it didn't have the leopard print. I hated the leopard print. Mm, it, was ugly. I didn't see that. it didn't bother me too much, but it was also wasn't the one that I was going for. So I didn't really yeah. like, have to see it, you know? Yeah, her little kimono one was really cute, but I hated mm -hmm. her. I, I mean, I really like the Chung Sam, but I really just wish it had a different pattern. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Fair. I get that. So with this, we're going to be discussing about the aesthetics and costuming styles uh, that are for a lot of the characters in Final Fantasy by going through the list of the Final Fantasy games. Now, just for the record, we might mention them in passing or such, but we're sticking to the numbered Final Fantasy games from the main set. Because if we did everything for Final Fantasy, that is a lot. We'd be here for a year. This would be the final podcast. Wait, <laughs> that doesn't work. This this will be the Final Fantasy podcast. Yeah. And, final and, fashion uh, podcast? Ooh. The Final Fashion. Yeah. Y'all you know, start like, hearing answers, start playing, and then Bahama's going to come down and be like, guys, stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> or worst case scenario, by the time we finish all 16 of these, 17 would be out. And then we have to edit that in. That's true. <laughs> Thus the cycle begins oh my new. God. Now, before we get started, one big note I want to go through is two of the lead character designers that are for these games. Um, the first one is, and I'm hoping I'm not getting these names wrong, but it's Yoshitaka Amano, who mm -hmm. did basically most of the Final Fantasy artwork for their character concept designs for 1 through 6, and a few of the later ones as well. And the other one is Tetsuo Numaro who's mostly fam more famous, fully known for, as the lead designer for a lot of the more modern ones. But these two tend to work on having art concept and designs of their characters. Like, Amano art is amazing. If you ever compare Amano art to what you get in-game, a lot of times it's two completely different worlds, especially once you get past, I think, six. I think Amano does art for all the Final Fantasy games, or has known to do art for all the other Final Fantasy games. I feel like there may have been a few that... They missed, mm -hmm. but not many. I know there was one, I can't remember the game for it, but it was, he did the concept art for it, and then mm -hmm. it got retooled based on their art style. Yeah. Because a lot of Armano's art, if I recall, is very, like, gothic in style. It always reminds me of, like, Vampire Hunter D. Yeah, like Vampire Hunter D, or some, or, like, classic Vampire Castlevania, where... Mm. Basically, the reason why we say vampires is a lot of the characters are, start off as their artwork as being just pale. Pale blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Locke, one of my favorite characters, he's from Final Fantasy VI, and several other characters in Final Fantasy VI, all of them look pale as, as Get Out, probably anemic. It's a real problem. That they have. I feel like he might also have whitewashed Barrett's design. 100%. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but I think that's one thing that he did do in the original, original concept. And they're like, nah, we need Barrett as a big, big dude. You know, it's interesting, like... I don't know that I would say it's it's whitewashed, but he does kind of go the other way with it, where mm -hmm. Cloud and Aerith are like the pale vampire looking people, and and then he uses a much darker color palette for for Barretts. Yeah, they're still all vampire-y looking people. Though. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a dragon in it for some reason. Like, <laughs> why not? All right, so starting at the top, we'll go start begin at the beginning 
um, which is Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3. And the reason why I'm bottling them together is their aesthetic didn't change, mostly because of, you know, game design, basically. These games only took a, like, a, like a year or so in the life cycle, and it was still for the NES when it originally came out. So they didn't change much of the artwork between 1, 2, and 3. They just changed how the storyline worked out. In fact, the first game didn't have a main character. They had the Warriors of Light. And they were just basic, I think, fighter, mage, white mage, or no, fighter, white mage, black mage, monk, I believe was in there back then. Yeah. Their aesthetics didn't really change for it. And they were all based around basically the same aesthetic as Dungeons and Dragons characters. Very European fantasy. Mm -hmm. Very much European high fantasy concept. And that makes sense because, and we've talked about this in another podcast, all RPGs by one way or another trail themselves back to Dungeons and Dragons. That was the start. And then they made Ultima before that. And then Final Fantasy started coming up. What podcast was that on there? Uh, that was on a podcast back in season one. It was in fact our hashtag not sponsored, but I'm going to plug that one. If people wanted to see that or listen to that, where, where would they go? Well, basically anywhere that they would have a podcast available because Gaming Theater Podcast is now available on all podcast streaming stations. Heck yeah. You know, I do find it kind of interesting that, um, as you mentioned, it, it does kind of stem largely from Dungeons & Dragons in D&D. &D. There is kind of a, a uh, accepted trope, right? Where you've got the fighting character, you've got the thieving character, you've got some sort of healer or cleric uh, type character, and then you've got um, the mage or the wizard. Mm -hmm. um, and I do find it very interesting that initially uh, Final Fantasy kind of followed those tropes. Exactly. In fact, the big thing that's different between Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy 2 is that Final Fantasy 2, they focused on more of a storyline. So they still took the same tropes, but because they were more, wanting to build up a more story-oriented uh, thing, and Final Fantasy will start doing that for the majority of their game, game uh, library. Um but they did that because it was easier to work with a story where you didn't just put a character in there. The character They could build a world around the character in its story plane. But yeah, as far as that goes, though, they would be, yeah, basic classes for it. The costuming didn't really change um, between them, like, over much. It was all very um, pretty similar styles all around. Yeah, so, like, you couldn't really tell the difference between a Final Fantasy character and a Dungeons & Dragons character unless you understood the color scheme that they went with, because that was a thing. I meant, like, Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3, mm -hmm. all kind of, um, you know, like, the white mage always has the white robe with the red triangles, black mage has the blue robe with the black, or with the big yellow hat, mm -hmm. <laughs> um... So the aesthetics didn't really change between 1, 2, and 3 much. It, I think that in general, most of the changes that were to be found were um, in the combat. Correct. I do find it kind of interesting as well, speaking of the aesthetics, uh, that you do see kind of a return to form in, like, say, 6 as an example. Uh, Sabin's outfit is very reminiscent of the monk's outfit, which I think is kind of a cool throwback it's a different color and he looks a little mm -hmm. bit different but there's definitely like stylistic elements in six that are kind of pointing back to one two and three and i think that's a cool nod oh yeah yeah and um even celeste like celeste is, has um good healing capabilities um her white cloak mm. um could even be sort of um brought back to the original um white mage and I think that, like, in general, you know, they're, they're, those are probably just, like, nods than, you know, anything major. For sure. Yeah. You'll see Final Fantasy's artwork team basically rehash the same character and then just up the design and change it around throughout all the other games, too. Because it's a classic for a reason, and they just don't want to change it much. If you want to find an example similar to that, Spider-Man and his costume almost always goes back to something similar to the original 1960s design. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. You were saying that all the characters throughout Final Fantasy don't really change? No, no, no. Uh, they reuse some of the Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3 uh, assets, like the design, and change around how their artwork looks like. So there's more oh. details to it. I mean, because so I was going to say, you don't even... I mean, you don't generally see, like... 
I mean, like, Lulu is your black mage, but she just wears a black dress. She doesn't have, like, the blue with the, you know, with the big yellow hat and things Mm. like that. I think that where you would generally see any sort of repeating costumes would be um, in 14. And that's because, like, you literally get, (laughs) Mm -hmm. like, I, like, you have um, Furion, Onion Knight, Squall, I think Cloud, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know everything get, yeah, yeah. The, the, the oh swordsman i also have, archetype i have a <laughs> lightning's outfit and some weapons like all sorts of things that you can yeah. get um for repeating characters but i think that generally the aesthetic especially after three um tends to change although i guess mm-hmm. it could actually be argued to an extent for because like Rosa is your white mage and she wears like um a pale pink um and very you know kind of in that same vein and then um Palam and Porum are your black mages but they just look yeah. like little tricksters <laughs> so let's move on to 4 in that case because that's the next big game that comes out in 4 they sort of have a dedicated character to a dedicated class on that and they also build the storyline around the classes and they change around the sleek a lot of the artwork and so or as such is less the derivative from uh final from uh high fantasy uh medieval style europe, europe style to a more of a renaissance style like the armor for cecil for example instead of that big bulky black armor that you see that you've seen on some of the other high fantasy ones, this is a sleeker design and everything is more, I guess, thinner and lighter. Well, he also changes class partway through. That's true. So like he does like when he's wearing his dragoon armor, he is a little bit, I mean, it is still very streamlined. It's not like as bulky or anything, but it is, he is, um, you know, like a dark knight, And then, um, he, he becomes a lot more streamlined when he becomes a paladin and he's back at level one and you have to put him in the back row of your party until you get him leveled up because he's weak and will die. Because <laughs> he goes back to level one. <laughs> wow. wow. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a really cool, like really interesting emotional move for him as a character. But when you're trying to go back down the mountain and he dies in one hit because he doesn't he doesn't re- maintain his level. I mean, obviously, it makes sense. Like, you yeah. can't reclass and just be at the, you know, at the same level, you know. Imagine you have you if you were in that party. All right. I'm Cecil. I am now turned into a into a brilliant paladin. I'm ready to go. Hold on there, Cecil. Back up. You're going to need him to stay in the back line this is too much for you now (laughs) keep him in the back row until he reaches a higher level but anyway it's uh, the paladin is when he starts to become a little bit more sleek Mm -hmm. i guess i can sort of see some renaissance influences i guess i would want to see um or hear some more of your arguments for that Mm because i feel like they do look very like artsy but i would even say Mm -hmm. it still just looks like a um like a fantasy style um it's just a very different kind of fantasy style i feel Mm -hmm. personally i would just like to hear your reasoning okay so and this has to deal with armor making in general history when armor and clothing goes from the dark ages into the renaissance especially in Europe, those clothing and materials tend to be lighter because they different things sort of changed on it. The biggest issue on that is two big things. Trade opens up to the east, and the way that's important is because one of the most hot commodities of, of fabrics is silk. And silk is Ooh, a much, much thinner material. But back in the Dark Ages, though, they didn't use silk, mostly cotton and wool because uh, cotton usually because uh, sheeps and 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 getting fabrics from hides were a big thing for that. Anyone who's worked with cotton knows it's a bit it's a lot thicker of a material. You don't it's not until you get to a more modern era where they start adjusting it. Basically once denim becomes a thing. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious though. I got myself a denim covered uh paladin. <laughs> no. No, please no. <laughs> you can't wash you can't wash that outfit. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna. You just... gotta get it wet. You gotta break it in. It's, it's just a hassle <laughs> for everyone. I'm gonna draw this. <laughs> I'm gonna draw <laughs> the denim paladin. The denim paladin. <laughs> Is, isn't this just best genus from My Hero? Yeah, this, this is basically best genus. I've never My Hero seen it, so I have no idea. Uh, There's a character <laughs> whose superhero costume is literally all jeans. It's all jeans. <laughs> it's just, just all, jeans. All jeans all the time. He's he's wearing like a jean turtleneck, basically. Yeah. Oh my god, that sounds uncomfortable. Oh, I, I'm sure it is. Very chafy on the nips. Mm, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to include that part, Leo. <laughs> yeah, or do whatever. That's the uh, that's the promo clip. <laughs> <laughs> but like Rydia, Rydia comes in looking very like a lot of her art. She just looks like she's wearing a silk dress. But also in the Renaissance, you tend to get a lot more dyes and, chem- and chemicals put in there. You know, kind of to go along with that, to maybe lead some, lend some credence to what, what you're saying, Leo. Mm-hmm. I definitely can kind of see, like, especially when you look at um, tactics, Final Fantasy tactics. A lot of their outfits are, I would say, probably Renaissance style outfits where they're wearing a lot of like mm. doublets. They've got a lot of different colors. They're wearing armor, but it's more of like an accent piece. Yeah. Uh, like a shoulder pad or or what have you. Um, greaves, I know they wear gauntlets as well, but not a lot of chest armor, which I think is very... That's a, it's a choice. Let's let's be honest. I don't need to protect here my chest area. What's important in the chest? If I, if I do that, they can't see my sweet shirt. <laughs> it's like midsections for every female character. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely true. And hey, if that's the stylistic approach they're going for, I'm down. But let me see some male midriff too. That's all I care about. Yes. Like, let's get some equal representation in here. Okay, can we just briefly, I know we're not going off or we're not doing the... um the side topics or the side games but can we just once again i feel like this has been brought up before um talk about the original armor from mobius final fantasy oh yes so (laughs) it was phenomenal (laughs) it was the the pants like the whole shirt like was not connected on the sides i think it was just like tied had like ties lacing up Mm -hmm. so you saw his entire side and like side boobs and then also his pants same thing all the way down to like the knees where they finally like tied Mm -hmm. together so you saw some full-on thigh and hip action you Mm -hmm. saw pecs you saw his ribs and women (laughs) were like that's amazing keep that in we want this but because people got we got some really loud people that were so like up in arms about it and were like no that's not cool that's not realistic blah 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 <laughs> they actually square actually changed it so that the armor covered his sides and and thighs and stuff it was Missed a travesty i think it was backless too if i'm remembering right let me actually take a look cuz i, 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 hope I feel back- like there yeah i feel like there was like I think it was, like, really strappy, but there was, like, no official back. I I remember, and honestly, like, I thought it was gorgeous. I thought it was awesome. I would have 100% played a game with a character dress like that. Oh, I do think it was backless. I thought so. So, if I'm understanding this right, this shirt, this, this, this shirt, basically, to protect him is backless, frontless mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. sideless somehow. Well, so, so there, there is, there is a front, but not much of one. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> as much as one needs to function to yeah. be a functional piece of clothing, but other than that, yeah, you're absolutely right. It was so disappointing to just I lose agree. this. So look, um, I am in favor if everyone needs to have armor that's not covering them and it still gives me good stats. Good enough, I'm in. Definitely shows more of the back and how it was like strappy in the back, mm-hmm. but I thought so. <laughs> There is. Yeah. Look, you can, yes. you can have bikini <sighs> chain mail in your in your fantasy as long as the males are also in bikini chain mail. That's exactly. what, yes. that's, that's, what I, that's the world I want to live in. Yeah. So this they thing, should have this... had an option at least if some yeah. people were super offended and been like, "You can change the outfit if you want." Yeah. If yeah. You're a quitter. Uh, <laughs> you're a quitter. <laughs> you're a chicken. Yeah. There, there's articles that are like due to fan feedback the. Um, main guys given more armor and I'm like whose feedback don't listen to them ever again you can also see he's got a ju- he's got a big tattoo on his back too yeah man why did we get rid of that 
<laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, he's got a hot big garbage. tattoo on the back. And then yes, like, Kate. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's what I had in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that back, though. <laughs> And the oh knees, the cutout for the back of the knees. <laughs> yes, no. the back of the knees. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Kate just awakened all of the thirst. <laughs> <laughs> look, we, we know we we know some aesthetics when we okay, see it. Look, all right? I'm That's sorry, all I'm saying. Does he have a booty window and you can see his thong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's a hundred percent. I think like, I think so. <laughs> it's like part thong, part belt. Which is very strange. <laughs> Asha chaps. I w- I would never. Yeah, is his ass wa- cheeks peeking out the side of that, or yeah. is that just yellow? I, I, think, I think it might so. just be yellow. Oh, maybe oh, it is. I don't know, but oh no, you're right. It is just yellow. <laughs> I thought maybe they were peeking out the top too, but no. That's mm-hmm. amazing. It's like, right, you know what? Listen. Square should listen to us. Listen, <laughs> listen. What? what? We need this in Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. Oh I my don't god. Care how much please. it costs or what I have to do to get it. I need it. I need to put this on my warrior of light this instant. Dear Square, listeners, never happen. never forget what they've taken from us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justice <laughs> for Mobius Final Fantasy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I never had to play that. I went to go play it the other day only to find out it had been completely discontinued. I was yeah. really bummed about it because I was like, I think I'm finally at a place where I can do it. No, I cannot. <laughs> Physically, cannot do it. I was playing it for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Same, Well, though. I mean, after they redesigned it, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> well, anyway, I that's the kind of... The- Stupid story. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the kind story. of uh, that's the kind of stuff that we need in this yeah. game. <laughs> no, I absolutely agree. You know, I, one of the things uh, I know I'm jumping ahead just a little bit, but uh, people may not know this about me. I don't talk about it very often. But Final Fantasy VII's uh, a game that I think is okay. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, but I, I was so nervous about the dress scene with Cloud mm-hmm. uh, and or the honeybee and section of that game just in general and i was so nervous that they weren't going to include that and uh spoiler alert they did and it's awesome and that is amazing it's better than i ever could have imagined it the dance mini game <laughs> <laughs> the dance mini game is so good yes i don't remember did they keep the hot tub scene in i don't know they did not oh so. that was a great scene that was, was a really a funny scene. scene i just need to talk about cloud's hair in that outfit though like <laughs> his hair is so fierce i feel like it poked through the wig they gave him <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that it's just, still there <laughs> the top spike I agree. poked through the wig uh-huh <laughs> Or maybe they just gave him hair extensions for the braid. I, oh. Why would you do that? It looks ridiculous. Uh, okay, I can't handle his hair. I'm That's sorry. Fair. Can I just? Bef- I'm sorry. I just have one thing I want to put in here. Um, during the makeover scene on stage with Andrea Rodea, um, or Andrea Rodea, um, <clears throat> they paint Cloud's nails, and and nowhere do we ever see that he took that nail polish off. After oh my he put God. his regular clothes on, so <gasps> he, just just he's it smacking down Sephiroth with an amazing manicure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm it, here for it. Yeah, like we don't know the underwear situation if he was allowed to keep it on, but I'm just saying, at least we know he has pink painted nails under there. Mm-hmm. It's glorious. Look, I didn't do, go these nails, you know, for nothing. I'm fighting Sephiroth, this badass guy with these nails on. I'll forgive him the hair for that, I guess. You know, you know I have a theory about Cloud's hair. Uh-huh. It's it's not actually hair. It's just... No, it is hair. It's just one big terminus carotene hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just solid. It <laughs> it's just solid. I just imagine him and Zach at the soldier barracks doing each other's hair and everyone's like hey where are those guys and they're like still in the bathroom doing their hair (laughs) they gotta get the part just right no joke though uh cloud's a cosplay i've wanted to do for quite a while and it's the hair honestly that scares me the most about that and that has prevented me from doing that (laughs) if it doesn't look right it's just not right it's it's you can definitely get um you can definitely get people to style the wig for you, though, which That's is true. what I would do. But um, oh, yeah. if we want to talk about something uh, in that vein, I'm sorry, but it is canonical 
that it takes an entire bottle of shampoo to wash Sephiroth's hair. I don't do it. <laughs> it is I mean, canonical. I mean, Have you seen those how glorious fan- locks? Huh? Yeah, I mean it's like below his butt, like, and he's a I tall think it's dude. To his That's a ankles. Ton. It's I mean, gotta be right. Yeah, it's really long. So I actually got a wig for Sephiroth that went to mid calf, and oh my gosh, I hate that wig so much. I <laughs> bet so that sounds like the much. worst. <laughs> Yeah. Like hey, it weighs experience. so much. Could you just throw like six pounds on my head just for an yeah. entire day? That'd be great. Thanks. And it's God. all in the back too, so your head is constantly getting pulled back. Oh. Your neck would just hurt oh. after that. I guess what you could do is you could um take like take part of it out in the middle section, like below the top of the hairline, or even at the base of the hairline or something, just mm-hmm. to like ease it up. Um, or use it as um, like just like little bits of it. So at least you can take off like one or two pounds. <laughs> yeah. I ended up having to put a bunch of hair clips and pins at the front to keep mm-hmm. it secured there. Oh, I don't doubt it. But like there's such a risk of causing hair loss from your hairline if you keep doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get back to seven again. Sorry. Trust me, seven's got its whole <laughs> section for that. Um. But let's go back a couple of games. And so I guess we're good with four. It's got a more Renaissance aesthetic. It kind of makes sense. The graphics are getting better and we have a way of redesigning it. And four, I think, came out for the SNES. So they had a way to do that and they introduced a new art style. So FF5 comes out and they decided, you know what? Nuts to this. We're going to go back to the old job system where people had different classes that you could pick. To its credit, FF uh, Final Fantasy V has 22 jobs in total. Which is weird because that's so not many. A, 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 that's so many jobs at classes, and not all of them fit the proper aesthetic for the game. <laughs> there could be Which, more. Um, oh, what was it? I was looking it up the other day, and I was like, said, "Okay, so one of the classes is dancer." Here's this medieval gothic style high fantasy game. Meanwhile, if you're playing as the dancer, you've got suede shoes, a classic uh, black trousers, and a V cut red shirt with a high collar. You're straight from the 70s. They're from the 1370s. <laughs> Listen, I, style knows no bounds. Style knows no bounds, even if it's all synthetic. Get my polyester going. <laughs> Dancers discovered polyester before anyone else did in the Final <laughs> Fantasy universe. Look, that one lady, uh, Celeste, looks like she's in a 19... Oh, gosh, 80s... One of those aerobic jumpsuits with the high oh, cut her on like the little thighs. sprite mm-hmm. design. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like workout gear. Yeah, yeah. if you look go. at her, we're Amano, going to the gym. If her Am- if you look at her Amano design, yeah. no Celeste from Six. So um, I never played Six. Oh, we'll get you, to Six in a second. Five is just a mess her, with twenty two. <laughs> if you look at her, um, her Amano art, which is like the more popular version, <laughs> um, <laughs> it is very. Uh, steampunk high fantasy but yeah Aww. we'll get there we'll get there but yeah so for five they have different job classes for them and that's sort of where things got kind of i'm pretty certain at some part the art, art department's like uh, was given instructions hey we've got 22 classes do art for them okay uh uh who do we know from who's a dancer john travolta nailed it let's do it you know, I'm surprised, like, definitely Dancer Directly from Greek. Deserves to be called out. Don't get me wrong here. But I, I find it funny that out of all of these, you don't call out Beastmaster, where they're all <laughs> sheep people. Yeah, I didn't get to Beastmaster. <laughs> or Berserker, where they're all wearing, like, Kigurumis, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love them so much! Like, it's so good, but it's very, like, can you imagine being like, yeah, I'm a... I'm a knight. I wear armor. It's super cool. Like, oh, I'm a black mage. I got a cool hat. Like, hey, I'm wearing like pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Listen, a I'm a berserker. I'm really dress mad. Dress for the job you want, <laughs> not the job you have. <laughs> next, <laughs> next cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be comfortable when you're beating the stuffing out of people. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, be- goodness, if I could show up to work. Well, I mean, I do show up to work because I work from home right now every day in my Jimmy Jams. Like, yeah. But if I could do that when we go back to the office, I totally would. I mean, no one's stopping you. <laughs> no, because I'm going to learn the dress code when I have the tour of the building. Well, yeah, but you won't know the dress code going in. 
Yeah. So you have one shot. You have one <laughs> opportunity. One opportunity. <laughs> hey, who would knows? You... They might change the dress code. My work did. Would you capture it? <laughs> <laughs> or let it slip? I love you Catch so it. much, Dane. <laughs> That's why you okay. guys keep inviting me back. Catch yeah. that train. <laughs> Catch oh, it. Oh, but yeah, you also have oh. the red mage, which is like, you're a mage, but you got to have a sweet hat. You look yeah. more like a pimp. But not like not like Black Mage's sweet hat because that was taken. So like you'd find a different hat that you uh, can it's wear. Like, it's almost like a Three Musketeers style hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also the feather in the hat is actually a historical reference. And do you know the the phrase? Um, you know, like Yankee Doodle and how he put a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. And that doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Uh, Macaroni is actually ancient, like not ancient, but like old fashioned slang for um, crazy. (laughs) He put a feather in his hat and the people were like, that guy (laughs) is touched in the brain. (laughs) And yet the red mage is always seen as like super cool. (laughs) Figure that out. (laughs) Dude, I play like the bard's more bougie cousin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually switched my warrior of light over. Like Dragoon is her main class, but I love the red mage class so much. It's so fun. Samurai is my favorite. I couldn't get into that one. Monk's but, you know, close second. Bard for life, yo. I was a monk main, and then samurai came out, and I was a samurai in eleven. So naturally. Oh, and one of my favorite things is chemist. There is nothing in the chemist outfit that says, I do chemicals. Uh, <laughs> the chemist hat, obviously. The chemist hat is a turban <laughs> similar to other cats. Yeah, they had to go to chemist school to get that hat, okay? You can't just buy those online you somewhere. You respect that, Leo. Yeah. They didn't do yeah, six Leo. years of chemist school to be called Mr. <laughs> Exactly. Right. That's where I went wrong. Although so your default class in this is freelancer, True. you know, which is you would they which don't is pay your characters in the main regular everyday clothes. Yeah, they oh don't get paid God. enough for what the for the work they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? They're like, on Fiverr. Hey, Warrior of Light, we'd love to help you. I guess Warrior of Light was was one. But go with me on this one. Mm-hmm. Hey, main character from Final Fantasy V. Uh, we'll pay you to defeat the great evil and to collect the crystals, but we're going to pay you an exposure. <laughs> oh my God. No. It's going to be a really good opportunity for you. Oh, sure. I can buy groceries with all this exposure. Yeah, just go pay your rent. Hey, maybe, maybe we can buy an airship with exposure. Oh, uh, I can stop my chocobo farm with exposure. They're going to actually, you just pay them on Fiverr. And so they yeah. do like your jobs, but for five bucks. And then they go home and are like, I can only afford ramen. <laughs> ah, the summoner class for this one. It looks like a, a, it's like the chemist has, but instead of a hat, you get a horn. I mean, summoner, summoner makes kind of sense though, because they've carried the horn motif forward at least. Yeah. Uh, cause it, you know, nine, their summoner had a horn, mm-hmm. so it wasn't a hat. It was like, they actually had a horn. That's yeah, a whole other thing. Part of her head. Yeah. Nope. Nope. And these guys, <laughs> it looks like it's part of their head. Like, or they just, but because you can change your glass, your job classes, apparently they just glue it on there. Let's just spirit glue this, <laughs> this horn on there. Call it a day. Maybe it's under the chemist's turban. You don't know. Yeah. Okay. What I do know is one of the job classes there is mime, and you look nothing like a mime. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, like, I want to know who at that board meeting was like, you know what this game needs? Mimes. Mimes. <laughs> All right. So Your let's hand. make sure. <laughs> right? Like, like who, I want I want to be there. I want to be a fly on the wall where they're like, <laughs> we, need, we need a mime in this game. And someone's like, okay, like, you know, like the stereotypical French mimes. black and white outfit. And like, no, <laughs> not that. Anything but that. Let's just put a bunch of colors, not the traditional outfit, but we need mimes. And oh, capes. and a cape. They all have to have capes. Because <laughs> mimes, mimes are known for their capes. Yeah. No capes. You have a cape, bright, big pauldrons, <laughs> huge, bright colors. That's a mime, right? It's like someone... I don't even think you can describe a mime in that way, and that's the one I come up with. Like, someone skimmed like, the... Looks ri- like- he looks like freaking Kid Icarus's older, less yeah. known cousin. They're like, you know what? I bet it was. They designed the blue mage already, and then ran out of time for the mime. And they're like, oh, let's just like borrow some design elements because the blue mage in that game has shoulder pauldrons, a cape, 
mm. and bright colors. But they got a blue Leonardo style domino mask. Yes, <laughs> I think true. what they did is they um, skimmed the Wikipedia page, but like the wrong Wikipedia page. <laughs> they were on clowns. Like, oh man, yeah. dang it. It said crime, not mime. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Fashion crime, so, yeah. to be specific. Yeah. <laughs> Off with his head. <sighs> oh, but this is Final Fantasy V. At some point, they're running out of uh, of art, art to figure out what to do with these guys. Isn't the first time that they're going to be doing with uh, with a huge job class system. Final X Two has a job class system with a thousand and one mm. costumes. Um, so cool though. Tactics 13? has a thousand one costumes. Yeah. Thirteen it, has a thousand costumes, sort of. Well, oh, no, <laughs> sorry. Lightning Returns. <laughs> Lightning Returns. <laughs> Which is Final Fantasy thirteen, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Like, thirteen does have different job classes, but mm-hmm. they all just have their own outfits because they're mm-hmm. their own individual people and they're allowed outfits. But they, um, <laughs> they uh, it isn't until, thir- until Lightning Returns that, and even then, it's not like the job class reflects the outfit. It really is just like, I think she has like 97 outfits or something that you can actually Holy crap. And most yeah. of them are awesome. Yeah. There's some that are not. <laughs> yes, that's very true. That's very true. I actually think that that the prom dress one is really ugly, but Oh, I like that one. <laughs> it's fine. I just don't think it needs to be on lightning. Oh, so, I yeah. have to look that up now. Once you have so many characters with so many job oh, so classes, cuz because you have yeah. five characters, and they each have to be able to have 22 options for all five of these characters. I would still totally do the Saints Row uh, Lightning and Snow if you don't, if you want to. Oh my god, yes, that sounds amazing. <laughs> okay, I remember we talked about that a while ago. We did, it's been a long time. A really long time. <laughs> we should totally do that, though. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, yeah, talk, yeah. we'll talk, we'll talk. Are we'll you talk. talking about this purple dress? It's like yeah. a purpley reddish dress. It's very oh my gosh, it's okay. gorgeous. Okay, it's if... very pretty, but I just I don't feel like it looks good on lightning. Anything looks good on lightning. <laughs> okay, you're right. She <laughs> okay. Sash. She's okay. gorgeous. Here's my critique. Take all the ugly flower shit off of it. Mm, it is a little busy. Yeah, like around the collar area, like I can see the dip. It's like, what's the point of having that sheer spot there if you're just going to cover it with that ugly flowery shit? Yeah. Okay, and um, take that crap off her wrist as well. We don't need that. I don't care if it's a prom dress. But she's Get going to prom. I don't care if she's going to prom. She is my child and she's not going dressed like that. I but love Ma. I loved that whole scene because I had gotten the See. collector's edition of the game and so or like with all the DLC and whatever. And um not the collector's edition. I couldn't afford it. But I got the like pre order bonuses that came with like Cloud's outfit mm-hmm. and and the purple um suit. Which is so much. Po- you take the the bracer off of Cloud's outfit, and you put them put her in the purple suit, and she is not just a tank, but she can like like she hits really hard and she defends really hard, and it was Ooh, amazing. I so that whole scene where she's supposed to be in that beautiful dress, she was in a purple suit and sunglasses, for me. which also <laughs> is pretty awesome. It's a great scene with that suit on. To be oh honest. yeah, she walked in there and was like. Snow. I'm dapper AF. Knock it off. <laughs> okay. I can see what you're saying about the top bodice line with all those God, ruffles why? being like when I zoomed in, I was like, ooh. Well, if I took that off, the dress would look a lot nicer. Also mm-hmm. those fake rose things. Yeah, there's those rose like, things need to go. There's like just some seriously. Hideous aspects to that dress. You're not wrong. Lightning like is my te- wife, so like the <laughs> like the flower textures on the actual dress. That detail is pretty, but mm-hmm. those hideous pom pom crap needs yeah. to be burned. And we'll get to the special thing about lightning when we get to thirteen, because there is some stuff about which is kind of ironic when you say she looks good in anything. We'll we'll get die, to that. Yeah. It, it's a little let weird that they uh, flowers die. That they went from Final Fantasy V all the way to thirteen. You know, it's kind of crazy <laughs> that they just skipped a whole bunch of numbers, huh? They, they just start <laughs> taking it back. Listen, <laughs> listen, you're lucky I haven't started on the wedding dresses. Okay. I'm I'm biding my time. Oh, right oh now. my god! I was actually Vivian. talking. Hold. I was talking to Leo about the wedding dresses the other day. We'll get there because I have 
opinions on one in particular. <laughs> I'm kind of scared because if it's what I think it is, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm on the right side of this conversation. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. We'll get we'll there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Well, I'll get to talk about our favorite and not favorite wedding dress. Cool. I've, cool. 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 Yeah, I feel like Dane this. will know where I'm about to have with this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But while we're trying to get our way through there, we are past five. We get to six. Six is the game I got not introduced to the Final Fantasy series, but this is where I started getting hooked to the Final Fantasy series is six. Six is my favorite. Um, which, it wasn't the first, though, that you played? No. Um, ironically, I it was Final Fantasy three that I played first, but I was only like six, and I didn't understand what was going on. That's fair. So I, I played have, for I like a, ten minutes and then quit. I have a theory about final fantasy uh that you just broke the mold on so that's that's interesting to me saved up my money i bought the super nes i was given the opportunity to get a couple of games however because of where i lived i had to go to like this uh old video game store that was there and the only couple of games that i could afford at the time happened to be final fantasy 3 and final fantasy 2 which in the United States is what they're titled, but in actuality, it's fi- uh, my it was Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy V. No, no four. four. Four, four, I have always hated that that's a thing. Yeah, I yeah. hate Dane, that. can I ask a question yeah. about your theory? Yeah. Is your theory that people's fi- favorite Final Fantasy is the first one they played? Typically, from the people that I, I have talked to, uh, that has usually been the case. Okay. I, I played four before i played six uh for me it was six was the first one i played i didn't realize i was playing final fantasy 3 until i was older and did, and found out that that was a thing on the nes i had something kind of similar where i didn't realize i was playing a final fantasy game to be honest mm-hmm. um for a long time i thought that seven was my first and that's not technically true mm-hmm. uh but only because i didn't realize that this game i had played on my snes was a Final mm. Fantasy game. <laughs> you thought Seven was your first, though, so that holds true for you, at least. Yes. Well, same thing for me. I knew that Six was the first one I bought, so. But was that the first one you played? I didn't realize until later it was the first that that I actually had played Three. That's true, because you bought them both at the same just... time. Y'all are gonna cry. Oh no. What, Kate? Don't cry. Why? The first Final Fantasy I played is Final Fantasy Fifteen. That's not, that's, not bad, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> you got you got there, Kate. Yeah, no. It, look, look. It's not the Final Fantasy on the outside that matters, Kate. It's the Final Fantasy on the inside. There's going to be people out there whose first Final Fantasy is going to start with 16. It's the Final Fantasy that the real Final Fantasy was the friends we made along the way. Exactly. <laughs> we we assembled a party. We went on an adventure. We saved the world. Aww. So, Gaming Theater presents. In my family, we jumped from a Super Nintendo all the way to an Xbox, and I lost out on all those generations of games in oh, between. Yeah. So, like, yeah. my entire generation, I have no idea what games they played when they were that's, younger. That's fair. Oh, my God. The PlayStation 2 is, like, one of the gems of video gaming. It's so good. Oh, my God. Anyway, sorry, Leo. No, that's fine. You can't put us all in a room. The because... gem in the game. <laughs> Well, I mean, the Super Nintendo and the PS2, I feel, had some of the top tier, especially like horror and JRPGs. Mm -hmm. Oof. Anyway, I apologize. That's a whole other tangent. No, you're fine. So Final Fantasy VI. In Final Fantasy VI, we kind of move into an interesting steampunk, but practical steampunk sort of sort of uh, look for it. And it fit with the aesthetic of the world, because one of the first things that you bump into is, you know, actually start the game is your main character, Tara, who's not even the main character of the story. She's just the one that you can pick right now. I would argue that Tara is the main character of the story. I know that they're all technically, or at least some of them are more main characters than others, but Tara's story is very integral to the plot. Oh, it is very integral to the part. All right. So, like, Tara's the main character, but if you, and this is a spoiler alert for a heavy spoiler podcast. Yeah, once you get to the second half of the game, yeah, you can totally skip Tara entirely. We don't need her anymore. She's gone. Uh, what is the name? Saitan and his storyline, which kind of just. Cyan? Of, Cyan, that's what it was. Cyan is like, oh, you have a really sad story, but you're useless in battle. <laughs> you said we don't, we don't need her, but I do. Cyan? In here. In here. No, 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 Tara. No, no, Tara. Oh. Oh, I always need Tara. Tara and yeah. Celeste are perfect. 
people, but you have, like, Terra is in a steampunk-style mech, and the storyline, especially in the beginning of the game, is all about these mechs being put together and where they're getting their power from and how they're running with magic and espers. It's a whole thing. Would you call it Magitech? What? I came up with that. TM, TM, TM. TM, TM, TM. So with that, you have this magic tech, uh, Steve, so it starts appropriating to the world. I think most of the places in the world, like the regular houses and such, you start seeing like fans built into the homes and such. Air conditioning is a thing. That's new. But it's interesting because characters themselves, the main characters, all have an aesthetic that's similar to this steampunk style, but fit their character archetype, I guess is the best way to put that. So, like, Lox is a thief, but he looks more like a, a weird pirate than anything else. But Edgar, who's the crown, who's the king, prince, crown prince? I think he's the king. He, at, he's the king at the time. He's a king. He is still wearing formal royal garb. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it's also like a like a class thing. But then there's Sabin. Sabin's a, a monk who's mostly t-shirt and uh, not even a t-shirt. The tank it's top. a tank top. It's a tank top and some and some white pants. Called it a day. Looks like a monk. I mean, yeah, look, if you're gonna suplex a train, okay, you gotta be wearing comfortable clothes and, and sensible shoes. If yeah. anybody does not suplex the train, yeah. are they really playing Final Fantasy VI? No. 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 Can we you must you must suplex the train? It is like a requirement. Yeah. It, it's a rite of passage. Yeah. True. Can we talk about Setzer for a minute? Uh, the gambler, yeah. <laughs> this Alucard looking motherfucker <laughs> over here. Like his like I'm sorry, this <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, yes, that's also yeah. true. That's I, I meant more just his appearance. He's a terrible I, character. He's a I terrible love character. how he looks. I, yeah, I, but <laughs> it feels like it feels like the team at Final Fantasy VI was like, "Hey, Castlevania, what are you working on over there?" And like, "Oh, we're making this game about <laughs> vampires." And like, "Cool, can I borrow your homework?" And they're like, "Yeah, man, just change it a little bit, would you?" <laughs> yeah, side by side, Etzer and um, Halucard and Alucard, same it, dude, same. It's the same, it it's the same a, photo. Same photo. It, it, like, it took a friend <laughs> shaming me. <laughs> To not like, because like sets are not a great character, a fantastic design. I always liked aspects of him, but then a sure. friend shamed me, and I was like, "Never mind, I actually hate him." I mean, gamblers are freaking cool. I get yeah. that. I absolutely get that. But yeah, no, the character is very problematic. Oh, very, yeah. very problematic. To put it mildly, he has sets are HR needs to talk to you. Now. Yeah. <laughs> No wonder what's her bu- Maria doesn't want to. Yeah. She's like, uh, I'm I'm skipping town when when Setzer's gonna be here. Yeah, it might not work. Setzer's got one, an airship. Nobody else does. I mean, but if you're looking from the skies and she's mm-hmm. on the ground, like they look like ants after a while. <laughs> they all look like ants from up here. But like they also have the famous opera scene where Celeste goes from um, her traditional fighter looks like an 80s workout video in some cases i mean if you look at her sprite though like and that's her sprite is or not her sprite sorry her artwork um Mm -hmm. version is actually uh, like closer to what they envision and a lot of the redesigns of her character Mm -hmm. follow her a mono design instead it's kind of weird because every time they make a new remaster of that they're like okay we got to make design closer to this closer to this well i mean like the remasters and stuff keep her jazzercise looking (laughs) self but when you look at like her artworks or when you see like like i don't know i think it was in mobius for a minute or brave Mm -hmm. exvius i think she's in brave Mm exvius and they give her a cutscene, and they have her like part of it in the opera dress but part of it is in the yellow and purple a mono outfit and so it's like anyway it is still very like high fantasy steampunk Mm -hmm. um but she does get to go from that into that gorgeous dress the gorgeous that opera dress i need to eat crow for just a minute uh I, i was incorrect on one thing i was just looking it up so the look i was thinking of for for alucard from castlevania doesn't come out until 97 which is three years after. Oh, six. so Alucard copied. Final yeah, VI. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring us back to that, but I just, wow, dang. I wow. just need to be academically honest. Okay. I appreciate it. We'll we'll write your wrongs. Yeah, yeah. But 
the Castlevania character of Alucard has came out far before that. Yeah, he was 89, but he didn't look like I was thinking he did. No, M- my bad. My later. bad, listeners. I'm sorry. He's always first, regardless of whether he's first or not. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know what? I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I, I have something to admit about Sotzer. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize in Kingdom Hearts 2 that's where that character came from. Oh, Dude, that's yeah. okay. I don't think a lot of people did. No, I did. I thought he was an original for like Square Enix character. I was like, wow, he looks stupid. He can't be a Final Fantasy <laughs> character. No, they had to put him. They had to put him in Twilight Town as um, a punishment. I yes, will say, and then he got his butt kicked by a child. Dude looks like he could be in Organization Thirteen. I'm yeah. just, I'm just saying, he fits in. His he he does. Does. look he is does. not that cool. No, you see, here's some lore. Here's some lore for you. He was put in Twilight Town because he wouldn't stop pestering to get into Organization 13. Oh, and they and were like... And then he got his ass kicked by a child. They were like, no, get out of here. We don't want you. <laughs> also, I feel like young Cypher really wants to be beat from The World Ends With You. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, have you played me? the second one yet? I have it, but I haven't played it yet. Oh my god, it's so I know, good. it's on my list. It's on my list. It's so good. So yeah, and then you have Shadow, which is just a ninja. True. Very true. They're, they don't change anything up with that. Good for him. Good he for doesn't him. need to change. Yeah, you know what? If you're a ninja out there, you're perfect the way you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the big ones that I can think of for Final Fantasy VI. Uh, I, I know I can talk about them all day. Wasn't ninja design actually Was from the ninjas designs, like their costumes were actually stagehand costumes in Japan? And that everyone saw it as ninja after that? But ninjas didn't actually wear that. Oh. That is true. I didn't know that. Like, there there were some practical clothing that, you know, people that we would associate with the art of ninjutsus, aka ninja, uh, did wear. Uh, and there were there was like not a uniform, that's not that's way too like codified, but there were accepted clothing of that time period that people who participated in these unlawful activities did wear. Um, so that is kind of where we get some of that mythos from the mm-hmm. ninja. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Like what we think of today is, is very much like not strictly correct as far as I'm aware. Well, that kind of happens with fashion and fashion trends as you go, especially historically. Um, mm. fishnets, for example, have been associated, especially in the modern era, mostly with, um, goth or emo style clothing. But when they first appeared on the, in the historical timeline, pirates, pirates had mm. fishnets. When did they start becoming associated with prostitutes? <laughs> when they were hot. Well, <laughs> pirate, <laughs> pirate, pirate prostitutes kind of made that jump. They jumped out. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, I see. Yep. Called them wenches in the day. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a living. <laughs> we'll say, just to kind of go back to the ninja thing, uh, mm. one of my favorite pieces of work from a very famous artist, Hokusai, who did the wave and a number of other woodblock prints, uh, I, in the 1800s, he's got one of like a, a atypical ninja that does look kind of like a modern day ninja, which I think is interesting. I mean, I guess 1800s weren't that far back, relatively speaking, but um, interesting. Yeah, just to touch on that. Different trends will associate themselves with different people or different job titles. For the longest time, if you were wearing like a plaid, checkered, like bright, ugly. Ja- uh, suit jacket it used to be associated with sleazy car salesmen from the 70s and the 80s i thought you were gonna come after my flannel and we were gonna fight <laughs> yeah, le- legitimately when he when he said like checkered my mind went lumberjack and i was like okay leo you're ready to throw down got it uh, leo's choosing violence today no one would be surprised at where my mind went and that's the <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, That's the outfit that Alan Wake wears in Alan Wake's American Nightmare. (laughs) It's it's flannel. Yeah. Very lumberjack. I was like, are we going to fight about Alan Wake now? Because I will throw down. Wow. Wow. (laughs) It turns out we're all unified about flannel. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. All of us are ready to fight Leo over flannel, of all things. That's that's apparently the the hot ticket item here. You know what? Good for us. Gaming theater will 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 turn against me is flannel, despite me owning several flannels myself, because that's a that's a functional and comfortable you know fabric. And yeah, it's good outerwear and it's innerwear. Good. 
depending on how cold it is. Yeah. But yeah, you get those weird associations for it. Um, polyester fabrics and such, and that big disco suit, always oh, a nightclub type thing. Or the dancer from FF5 for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Boogie Nights is really popular, okay? But yeah, so these are things that just sort of have a weird association with it. Now, we move on from 6 to one of a lot of people's favorites, Final Fantasy VII. I've never heard of that game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're lucky because really it's not really great. It's not okay, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing out on much. Oh, God. You know, ah! I guess we'll change your life. But... <laughs> I love this game! <laughs> so Seven is always interesting because its aesthetic for its design and art also fits into its storyline, which you'll start seeing Final Fantasy start to work kind of with that with a lot of their characters. Somewhat. Not all, every game does that. But in Seven, it was. In Seven, it started off with being basically in the rebels who are also very much pro-environment dealing with the... Shinra Corporation, which is totally messing with the environment. It's industrial. Sucking people's souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Literally. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it was very much an industrial revolution, an industrial theme. And so with that, even in the original PlayStation game, they worked within the aesthetic of the industrial age. And much like in the industrial age that we have here in in our timeline, a lot of their clothes were more functional, simplistic to because it was mostly working in factories and such what Very is a clouds true. outfit is basically black military um a bdu military pants and a black shirt i love that military. he's wearing a ribbed tank top yeah that makes me so happy so it does <laughs> Listen, depend on what jersey knit version... was a thing apparently yeah 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 it depends on what version of him you're looking at. The original is sort of a darker color, dark purple, maybe dark blue. Uh, it's purple in the sprite in the game. Uh, oh, that's and then, right. Yeah, it's, it's bright purple. The and then it's, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a really dark purple or black in the remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Shinra uniform standard is blue. It's like a, it's like a royal blue. Mm-hmm. I think I'm actually thinking about the movie, the Advent Children movie. Oh, yeah. That's another one. With yeah, he one. wears a lot of black in that. But that one, we start getting into, like, <laughs> Cloud starts getting a little bit into the 90s grunge scene. He's going to raves, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's hanging out at the mall. Yeah, it's not a phase, Mom. <laughs> Hot topic. Vincent rubbed <laughs> off on him, you know? it's <laughs> Except Vincent is actually, like, like old i mean not old old he's like in his 70s or 80s or something not old he's he's just so tired of everyone's shit yeah Yeah. he's just like i was goth before you assholes even knew what goth was i'm the original vampire aesthetic he's that elder goth who's like trying to show the children how to do it and they're just not listening he's 57 yeah He's decrepit. 57. 57 years old. Oh He's I Methuselah. <laughs> he was there when the goth magic was written. He remembers times un- now forgotten. Do not Only quote the old the wisdom. Do not quote the old magic. I remember when Hot Topic was picketed by little Christian women. <laughs> You children better be happy for our sacrifice. You know, I gotta say, that is really odd. Like, he's a vampire. He's locked in the Shinra Mansion. he's actually a vampire, He's totally though, a, vampire. No, he's a vampire. No, he's a berserker. <laughs> That's true, too. But he's a creepy vampire. He's in a coffin when you find him. If he's not a vampire, he's just a weirdo. He's a he's a 57-year-old weirdo laying in a coffin uh, in an abandoned building. OG goth, you know it really you know isn't a phase. <laughs> no, what, what we do in this show. point. What we do in the shadows, but it's Vincent. <laughs> yeah. Oh my! Oh my God! He's Guillermo. Oh no! He's a hundred percent Gizmo. Leo, Leo, I don't want to have to be this person, but we might have to do this in two parts. <laughs> we might. Oh, sorry, what? I don't mean to be so silly. No, it's no, how, it's all of us. How dare you? We have all been taking this so seriously up to now, Sam. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I put myself in the corner. I so, I guess back semi on topic. Um, sure. There's okay. So, if you ever look at the original Final Fantasy VII artwork, okay, Monos or, or the other one? 
no, the one for in game. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. game art like on the cover where it has a picture of all the oh yeah, like the the, the CG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the Nomura art. Is that the Nomura? Yeah, yeah, but not like, the Amano art, the Nomura art. Yeah, all of the characters, all the major characters, except for that you can play as, except for Kate Etzeth and um, Vincent, all have like big cla- uh, leather work boots. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kate Seth really can't. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would say Red 13's not wearing boots either, but Vincent's are boot esque, but he has those metal bits. Yeah, those on metal it. shoes from his times of yore in the old goth days. <laughs> oh my God. I had not seen this art in a little bit, even though I have a shirt with it on it. Yeah. I forgot how gigantic Barrett Wallace's feet are. Yeah, they're like. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being weird. They are proportionally gigantic. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> yes. bad. Barrett is one of my favorite characters from that He's game. Great. I, He's Barrett amazing. and Jesse he, are my yeah, favorites. In the remake, they did a very nice job with Barrett. I was very pleased. <laughs> oh my yes, god, they actually have I an was worried. They have a, a mod for that gives him his Amano version, but it's just like the outfit, and they give him like his dreads and that's cool. Oh my god, it looks mm-hmm. so amazing. Anyway, Barrett and Jesse are my absolute favorite characters. They're great. But yeah, so interestingly enough, between and and this is important for this, between this and the remake, um, a lot of the characters' aesthetics didn't change, but their artwork changed basically. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, of course, of course. people would throw a fit if their outfits. Uh, I find interesting. This is around the time that you kind of start to see the Final Fantasy is belts. Uh, <laughs> conversion you see it a little bit in six right like Locke has a few there's other characters who have a few but like this is really where like most characters have a belt and it's very pronounced yeah. at least one sometimes Lulu two. is the one who took it to the extreme yeah. <laughs> she, she and from what said, uh, when we get belts. to Lulu on and 10 there there's a whole there's apparently a whole backstory to that one I, that I was informed on, on sure. Lulu's thing um but yeah so Aerith's simple red leather jacket you can just find it you know in various places for it but that red leather jacket goes from being in the remake is a regular leather jacket and i think in the original it's a half jacket yeah in the in the remake it is also a half jacket but it's denim oh it's denim instead of leather yeah that is mm-hmm. not a leather jacket ah which means that it's easier to come by. <laughs> There's your I mean, denim final because she's the paladin. She needs the denim. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the denim paladin. paladin. We solved it. <laughs> oh like my gosh. you would have to dye that, and that would be such a pain. I <laughs> have dyed denim pink, and oh, I'm sorry, but dye. So first of all, dyeing anything red sucks mm-hmm. because yeah. red bleeds everywhere. everywhere. You have to wash it. You'd have to wash it like four times just to get it to stop bleeding. And by that point, you've washed a lot of the red out. And so mm-hmm. you would have to like keep redying it and stuff. Um, but yeah, she is wearing a denim jacket mm-hmm. and she is wearing, um, I would honestly say that's probably a pink cotton dress or mm-hmm. a poly cotton blend, depending on, I mean, seven is a little bit more modern, so I would and I would expect that they have poly cotton blends. Yeah, yeah. and that if, means if they got dress, trains, they could do that. Yeah. yeah, and that also means that they wouldn't have to. Her dress wouldn't wrinkle as easily. Mm. I do find it kind of interesting that the jacket is sort of like an underbust in the original art. Yeah, uh, and then in the remake, it's a little bit longer, which I don't think is a bad call. Yeah, it does go a little bit um, longer, but it did like the original did have that. 90s crop aesthetic because crop mm. tops were mm. huge Real in the thing. 90s huge in the oh, 90s Lord. <laughs> yeah so it even if she didn't have like the crop like her dress wasn't a crop but no. she still got that aesthetic through the um uh through the crop of her jacket mm-hmm. yeah and then you have uh tifa which it barely changed anything on tifa really yeah they just kind tifa. of like gave her a few more accents yeah, Despite and they um, made what her, the um, internet will tell you. Yeah. They, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, they well, so Tifa is really is really interesting to me because in this in the world of modern gaming, which <laughs> I think that a lot of people um are kind of throwing fits over, even though it's just it's about the women anyway. Um, mm. like like. 
Claire and oh people threw a fit over Jill from Resident Evil 3 remake now um is wearing jeans but uh her alternate costume um or like you can wear her original costume as an alternate and they made it into skorts which first of all were huge in the 90s mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but oh, i had so many skorts <laughs> yes uh, i wanted skorts so badly they're but, so fun um yeah like like it, the same thing with tifa is that they gave her um skorts and it's like a pleated skirt with those shorts underneath and they made her top more practical and like look i'm just saying it they didn't reduce her boob size no she's just mm-hmm. taking better care of her back <laughs> sports bras are a thing y'all yeah she's wearing and she's wearing two which some people with big bazongas have to do so that they don't hurt their backs mm-hmm. while they're just trying to exist um and live their normal lives when she's um, a martial artist, like she does flips and shit. Like, of course she's gonna strap. She's that gonna down. need something yeah. to secure that. Yeah. To yeah. do to do those the the flurries of kicks and stuff. Like she is gonna need to not have them hitting her in the face. No. As a martial artist that also has big tits, yes, you do. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's and a so thing. She is wearing two sports bras, but her her boobs are still are still big they did not nerf her titties no. they just gave her better self-care yeah uh, and thigh highs but i think thigh highs just need you know like what that just that's just a hot move that's just a hot move true real hot girl shit yeah <laughs> she's so sexy. candy baby she doesn't even know it i love her so much she, she honestly, deserves to be told that she's hot every yes. day but she's just so sweet and, and I, I do like that i mean in the original game she is kind of i mean this is a little bit beyond the scope of our uh of our oh no like we haven't here. done that i know yet. i know i know I'm, I'm i'm just trying to temper myself because i will talk about this game until you stop me <laughs> um this one in 13 man I'll, i will just go i love it. um but no like she's a badass character you know and mm-hmm. yes she was over sexualized in the first game i agree her remake outfit is better you know she's still the same badass awesome character that she was in the original she's just wearing a sensible you know outfit now yeah she yeah. understands herself and her skills <laughs> and she is is wearing something that better matches her self and so yep. like i don't know like i feel the same thing this is again a little bit beyond the scope but i feel the same about jill and resident evil 3 like why th- the excuse in the beginning was that she was caught off guard and didn't have time to change her clothes which that makes sense but why would she be in a zombie infested city that she knows is coming under like is being infested more and more each day and not just be wearing jeans yeah (laughs) Yeah. that's the more sensible decision anyway because zombies can't bite through jeans as easy as they can bite through skin you know i will say res evil 5 did the best in that Sure, you could put Sheva in a, a revealing outfit, but also you could put Chris in a possibly even more revealing outfit, surprisingly. It's like Mad Max style outfit. Oh my god, with Listen. the like leather banana hammock? It's incredible. I, I have feelings about yeah. Chris's Resident Evil alternate costumes because it's like for every sexualized woman we get a sexualized chris which i'm here <laughs> so, for like, I'm in. so like in six um we get sherry adult sherry in mm-hmm. her school uniform from when she was in middle school and it's yeah. it, it hasn't grown but she has and so it's very mm-hmm. teeny tiny well you know what chris is wearing like a kimono with just the one sleeve on so his chest is showing and he is one solid breeze Mm-hmm. away from sh- from flashing the world oh yeah and like in revelations one jill gets a pirate costume that's got a little bit of midriff and a lot of leg chris gets a sailor outfit he gets sherry's sailor <laughs> outfit <laughs> and it is skimpy and little and he is smoking a cigar and it is <laughs> hilarious and so i like i live for every time chris gets an alternate costume yes because Capcom's like, we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, Anyways. I'm fine. You want to you put somebody in something, that's fine. But, like, 
let's let's see what Chris looks like in that outfit too. I'm you yes. know they could make it a one to one and I'd be fine with that. <laughs> yes, I want I want Chris in like Sheva's fairy tale outfit or her like tribal Le- outfit the leopard just- print one <laughs> <laughs> yes where it's like a bikini with some like <laughs> with just some like a necklace and some bracelets wait what uh, outfit oh, is this sheva uh, look at Mars. look at sheva uh resident evil 5 sheva. sheva's um tribal outfit mm-hmm. tribal okay looking at it right now i would i would pay money to see chris in that same Oh my lord have mercy, what kind of fetish fan art is this? <laughs> it's probably not truthfully, truthfully, it's probably not fan art. That's probably the actual, the actual, the actual no, costume. It, no, it is. I'm saying like who allowed the fanboy to draw this? It was I like two thousand and seven. Oh, it was two thousand and nine. Well, oh, I guess it was okay. two thousand and eight when it when they were working on it for the most part, but I also just wanna say it is an over fetishization of yes. African people because she is yes. from Africa, and so it's a little Very bit so. in poor taste. But I would still pay cash money to see Chris Redfield in that outfit. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I think Does we should. Chris get back Redfield have a tribal outfit. No, what? but you should look up Revelations Chris Sailor outfit. Yeah. Oh, I'm That's doing that now. Time. That is my favorite. Yeah. I play Resident Which, Evil for the plot. Same though. <laughs> um, before we leave from Final Fantasy VII, even in the PlayStation era, even the surrounding areas that you could go to, they also regionalize a lot of their clothing styles and aesthetics, which makes sense because that's how we work normally in history. True. Different styles and aesthetics can be are t- associated with different regions for that. And different cultures and stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even within our own cultures, like I believe, like if you're in the United States and you're from Hawaii, not wearing a tie is a thing in Hawaiian culture. Well, and Hawaii is a lot more like they were they were isolated from the United States until Mm -hmm. they (laughs) anyway, I have have thoughts about this, but until they were annexed into the United States. And so they, you know, they are they still have a lot of their original like culture and traditions and such that have been able to grow with them now you go to colorado what do we have nothing (laughs) (laughs) well colorado will have and montana will have more of a layered clothing style but that's because weathers will change a lot but they wear flannels there they they do they do a flannel (laughs) oregon does a flannel but that's because it rains a lot in oregon i think that i think that in the world of Final Fantasy VII, I think we see a lot more broad uh, mm-hmm. cultural yeah. influences, like especially in Wu Tai. Like obviously, yes. that's that's China um, inspired, and mm-hmm. um, you know, like I think that that's one of the biggest ones. But even um, Cosmo Canyon, I found out earlier today, um, Cosmo Canyon actually is inspired by the Native American tribes within the United States, um, mm-hmm. but like cliff dwelling Native American tribes. Yeah. Um, so like in, the Pueblos uh, and such. Well, in oh. Utah, uh, New Mexico, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Fort but, Condor as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's got that kind of, you know, very, like a lot more, um, I don't want to say dramatic, but you know, like in the United States, everyone wears shirts and jeans like it's not that (laughs) it's not that special you know like it's kind of a common thing to just be in our shirts and jeans and there are you know things between that like in southern california i don't know that i owned a long sleeve top you know like i Mm -hmm. lived in san diego and the coldest it got was like 60 degrees and i would have a sweater but you know so within that yes we do have um different styles you know between like north and south east and west mm. you know uh pacific northwest you know states within themselves and things like that but i think that when it comes to things like final fantasy 7 we do see a lot of um you know influences outside of the united states now to go completely against that <laughs> the golden saucer is obviously las vegas <laughs> true <laughs> But it's Vegas, but, baby. But that's a um that's also like kind of a kind of a gathering point for anybody who just mm-hmm. wants to get out and have a good time betting. Yeah. And Vegas is its own aesthetic for that. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very Vegas. It's definitely a Vegas thing. So moving on from Final Fantasy VII. Wait. <laughs> Slowly I need on. <laughs> I need to talk about short hair Safaroth for just a second. <gasps> Can we talk about short haired song oh with his with his hair in a ponytail? Have you all seen from the new mobile game the glory that is short hair? Yes, Sephiroth? I have seen it. I it's not. Let me Google beautiful. It. It's. Oh my gosh! I know. Right? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Ever oh, Crisis. My. I'm I'm playing Ever Crisis for the plot. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh-huh. I haven't downloaded, uh-huh. but I haven't started it yet. Is it like a gacha? Yeah, yeah. So, kind of. From what I've done. I haven't started it either yet, but uh, there there will be like alternate costumes that don't exist. Speaking of uh, aesthetics in Final Fantasy. Oh my god! Oh, did you dang. see the er- the new dang. Aerith costume? It's so cool. Oh dang. my god. You have given me the vapors. Yes. <laughs> you're all welcome for that. Listeners, if you, if you Google it, you're, you're welcome. This is the same reaction I had when I saw Mihawk in episode 101 piece. Oh my god, Mihawk <laughs> is so <laughs> badass. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, let's put I, I just, I just that sentence so we don't go any yeah, more off track. Yeah, I just could not leave Final Fantasy VII without bringing up the glory that is short-haired Sephiroth, because that's yeah. that's definitely a thing. Um, um, I also to be. I love the leather outfit they gave um, Aerith. Like that thing looks so cool. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And that is something like I know a lot of people don't care for mobile games, and that's totally fine. But I'm actually really excited to see what they're going to do. In this mobile game that is revolving around Final Fantasy VII, because it does give them the freedom to sort of approach the styles of the characters differently. Um, right. Mm-hmm. You know, we would never have seen a short haired Sephiroth until now. Um, yeah. Even uh, at the earliest point also, in the game, you know. The suit that he's wearing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Yeah, so I, I, like, I thought I was though, over this. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to bring you back from the brink, my friend. But uh, How yeah, dare I, don't know. You? I, I just I just think it's very interesting because you know obviously I don't think these outfits are necessarily canon. Uh, the short haired stuff off in the outfit he's wearing are probably, but like you can put the characters in ridiculous or outlandish, more outlandish costumes than they would have worn in the game. And while I think that there are some diehards who will probably have an issue with it, I think it's actually really cool because it you, you can showcase these characters wearing something different or or weird. And I don't know. I just I'm hoping to get a better picture of the Final Fantasy VII universe through these ridiculous costumes. I guess. Yeah. Well, I I feel also like that's something that can be said for fourteen as well, in yes. a way, in the sense that like the in-game costumes. Um, you know, there are a lot of them and they're very diverse, but then when you go to the Mog station and are looking at the things you can buy, like, oh my god, this is such an eclectic there's like motorcycles mm-hmm. <laughs> and and stuff. And so yeah, it's uh it's interesting. But yeah. Seven does have a lot of um like <laughs> <laughs> a little, little distracted there. Sorry, I was typing no, I in the it. chat part. I, I get it. Um yeah, it was uh, uh, just like a, li- a nice um, array of tastes uh, mm-hmm. like and styles and stuff from within the um, universe. And I think that's really neat. I was actually going to talk about because Sephiroth doesn't get a dress and I think that's sad. Agreed. Um, he should get a dress. Yeah. So cosplay goals is me doing Sephiroth in a dress. I mm-hmm. cannot wait to see this. Yeah. It would be a black yeah. and white dress, wouldn't it, to fit the Black and yeah. silver, Leo. Like a black <laughs> glittery one with silver. It would be great. Mm-hmm. Now, of- now, the real trick is going to be getting the uh, Masamune in the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> he can just take, you know, no, he can just take a page out of Wonder Woman's butt book yeah. and put it between his butt cheeks. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That sword is taller than him. I don't yeah. know how he even. Well, you see, you throw a sheet over it, and you say, "I'm doing a puppet show for you." <laughs> Material. That's how did you it. Sit. There you go. I was trying to look for fan it's art. It's called fashion, Seth sweetie. Is that a for... third leg, or are you just happy to see me? 
It's Sephiroth, no, that's my so sword. probably just the, not, not even that happy to see you. I was no, trying to find a picture. He will never be a memory, though. Sephiroth He's happy to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Anyway, sorry. You, you, we can move on to eight now, Leo, if we have to, I guess. <laughs> we'll move on to Final Fantasy VIII, so we'll get the first eight done. Now, in Final Fantasy VIII, you now have... Um, I guess this would be the closest... Th- because Final Fantasy VIII comes out in 1998. That sounds right. It, yeah. It was 97 so, for 7. Yeah. I 90, yeah, 97 for 7. I know that. And then I think it's... because it, 99. 99 for 8. Uh, 99. So this is important because this is the first time we go into a more modern aesthetic for a Final Fantasy game. And it's not the only time, but this is the first one. Um, So with this, because everyone's in their normal uniform and then they leave and they go. And once the game, you know, opens up for the world, then you see them in their regular clothing. Uh, What is it? There's Squall who has a... Everyone gets leather. You Everyone kind gets of leather. See, I mean, from the off, you see their their regular outfits. When they when they're in their school uniforms, it's actually for a um like special events. He's like, the most you... handsome guy here. <laughs> <laughs> like you he's never a leather see... baby. Oh you know, yes, yes, that's so true. Like you never see um <laughs> like cipher in anything but his regular clothes and like raijin and fujin but you know okay can i just say that what's the name of the dude that had a tattoo on his face that no one really liked Zell. i love Zell. Zell. i love Zell. <laughs> listen he's one of the easiest people to cosplay i'm just gonna say that right now yeah. oh yeah <laughs> he is freaking looking like a damn bmx biker video game reject like come his on his jacket dude. would Shorts. be the hardest he mm-hmm. has jorts. He has jorts. That's, that's true. <laughs> okay, but the main female lead, tattoo. The main female lead also has like that sweater top that every oh, girl in the nineties wore. Yeah. Oh, my, oh God, yes. my sister had outfits like that, and I tried yeah. to copy her because I didn't have any taste back then. <laughs> Is that Ren- that's Renella, yeah. That's Renella. Yeah. yeah. Renella <laughs> has the uh Renella has the jean that. skirt. I yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, uh, take the wheel, no. I feel like Selfie's outfit in that game was also very reminiscent of ladies' fashion in the nineties. It reminded me of like um like bands like Aqua and mm-hmm. that yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, well, the... That's that shit that the people who sang songs like that genre would wear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, girlish. the square top line, like a lot of um, you know, it wasn't like a V line, it was just like the the straight ac- across top. Renoa's yeah. dress has that same thing, I believe. Um, her dress dress, not her out- her regular outfit. Yeah. Um, because I think she does have a sweetheart top in her regular outfit. But, um, selfie and Renoa's um formal dress both have the square cup top, which is very nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yes. The only thing that could have made it more nineties is if they were spaghetti straps. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, now, are you talking cover? about the halter top one, or oh, it is a halter top, isn't it? Which I mean is also very. That is a very nineties thing. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think Quistus is the only one who's not from the nineties. Uh, <laughs> I think that if she did still have the the belly button showing, which was a True. big thing in the nineties. Yeah. Um, Spice Girls. <laughs> Spice Girls. Yeah. But I think that the rest of her. Um, yeah, I think the rest of her stuff actually isn't very reminiscent of the 90s. Truthfully, I'm just surprised we made it into the 90s and through the 90s of Final Fantasy without seeing somebody in a tube top. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> for whatever second. reason, that was everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's somebody in... Nine, I mean, I think she looks her. like she has a tube top underneath that vest that's half zipped. Th- that's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't go all the way down. Yeah probably speak of these straps i do know um when i was playing through final fantasy 8 and i found out that and i'm uh, like oh here's selfie and she's got that triple nunchuck thing as her primary yeah, weapon three section staff or, yeah the yes both staff. and then she turns into, uh, and then are like okay get your team together you've got to go out on your own all right and she jumps out with that yellow dress I'm like what happened here that <laughs> <laughs> this 
this uh, battle co- combatant does not fit this aesthetic. I mean, okay, Squall's wearing leather pants and a leather jacket with f- a fur collar. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, don't, the only battle that dude's ready for is, like, Rave Night. <laughs> He's ready for a dance battle. Yeah. The picture I just sent does have a ca- have a female character in Final Fantasy IX in a tube top. In IX? Really? Yeah, she's a side character. I can't oh, remember the it? name of the theater troupe. Oh, yeah, oh that's, that's true. I, I can't think of anyone else, though. <laughs> See, Zelda, it's a costume is a lot harder to make now because it's harder to get that kind of clothing than when it's not the 90s. Yeah, yeah. You, like J- Jinko Jorts. Jinko uh, Jorts. You're well on your way to getting a Zell costume <laughs> done. Jinko Jorts. Am I wrong, though? No, that's, no, the, that's, that's the, the thing. thing. Jinko like, that's, Jorts. That's the look. Yeah. It was in yeah. fashion at the time. You you yeah. kids wouldn't understand. <laughs> Thank kids goodness. these days just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like Renault has got something very typical, but only the nineties could have had something like that. <laughs> like I have yet to see anybody wear a similar outfit like that, like what Renault has got in today in the modern era. I've just realized we're stopping it after eight and I'm very sad because nine's incredible. Mm-hmm. That means the next time we'll start it at nine. <laughs> I know, but nine's so good. And yeah, we get to who's, talk about the wedding dress the and then we get to talk Dundee about the character. <laughs> Croc Oh, Irving! (laughs) Irvine. Irvine, like Irvine, Irvine, California. His Irvine character who never misses. Yeah. Okay, okay. He never misses because he can't take a shot. I mean, so (laughs) no no joke. I love him. (laughs) I've told this story before, but you meet this character. He's wearing a cowboy hat. He's got on a cowboy shirt, a cowboy jacket. He's wielding a gun because that's a thing in Final Fantasy. His purple vest is everything it's fashionable as hell yes. that's for sure but he's all like cocky and shit and like oh yeah i don't miss literally the first shot i took with him as a character he missed <laughs> and i was like what what that would be amazing though to build into his character is that he can never yeah. miss even if it's like a crit- critical failure and he still does one damage or something like he still always does damage um yeah have him do terrible damage i'm fine with that but like don't claim you never miss and then miss the first shot i never used him again after that i was like no you're you're done man um cursed benched there's actually (laughs) something in the ai from seven that i want to share with you dane you might already know Hmm. this um so you know how rude has a crush on tifa Mm -hmm. yeah can you blame him um (laughs) No. So did everybody. Um, Well, so in his AI, actually, it is programmed into him that if that when you battle against Reno and Rude, Mm -hmm. um, if Tifa is in your party, I don't know if she has to be at that point, but if she is in your party, he will. He has like a one percent chance of ever targeting her. I wondered about Um, that. And if if uh, the other party members are dead and it's only her. He has like a ninety percent chance of not critical hitting her. Oh yes. wow! And I, I, thought I that didn't was... know the the crit thing, but I did notice that like he would ignore her, and I was like, "Why?" Because <laughs> he has such a little crush on her. Yeah, and I, I should have noticed... hit my bay. I and I don't know if this is if this is the same in the remake, but I noticed that my first time playing through the remake, um, I always like going over and playing as Tifa. Yes. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and he whenever i would go and fight rude he would actually like whenever i got too close to him to like start hitting him he would actually grab her wrist and do a defensive maneuver to get her away from him i almost did not get hit by rude at all when i first played the remake and was playing as tifa i love the turks i know they're so cool yeah but i don't know if that is if the ai is the same in the remake and he just won't target her if you're playing as her or if that was just my luck (laughs) but i thought it was really really neat leo we're going back the turks are super cool right (laughs) because (laughs) even though they're wearing a uniform it's still really, individually styled. It's so individualized. Yeah. So like, you know, you see Reno's and he's like disheveled. He's got no tie on. It's open. 
Uh, then you got Rude, his partner, and it's very like clean, buttoned up, controlled, and that ties into their characters so nicely. And like, mm-hmm. oh my god, the way that like Reno's fighting style is a lot more like messy but aggressive. I'm sorry, he kicked my ass in the remake. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he was not yeah. a pushover, but he was like, um, him and his little police baton. I <laughs> know he beat my ass. Uh, I liked it. Wait. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, he is a little bit more of like a wild style of fighting, whereas Reno or Rude really is more controlled and like he's in control and he is very precise with his shots and stuff. And so it actually does really nicely reflect. And then there's Rufus, who I know he isn't a Turk, but like, oh my god, I hate him. Yeah, I love that, him, but fair. I hate fighting him. That's also fair. You know, I, I think it's interesting. Sang is very well put together, but in a much different way than, say, Rude is. You know, it's it's very much so like bureaucrat yeah, than it is like is, fighter. He is like the leader of mm-hmm. the Turks, and so he, um, he does have to be more like put together. I'm sorry, those leather gloves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they mm-hmm. do things. Fair, it's absolutely <laughs> and, fair. It's it's such an, a neat little detail though because like he wears those gloves even when he's just um like signing papers and stuff. Um Wait, but he Are we talking about his like huge duster white duster with like the belts and straps? Oh, we're talking about Sung now, not Rufus anymore. Oh, Sung, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we switched. Whoa. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, but I'm also sorry. that duster though. He took belts to an extreme. Also, <laughs> he was like, "Lulu can't be the only one." <laughs> okay, but Sung showed up, and I was like, "Oh, I love him. I don't even care." Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's because he's amazing. I love him. He's a bastard man, but he's great. I also really kind of liked how in the original, at least, because we haven't met her really in the remake. Elena. But yeah, Elena's outfit, like, it almost feels. It, it's always felt to me like it's almost just a little bit too big. <gasps> Uh-huh. Like, she yes. hasn't quite grown into it yet. But also, I love that hers is also done up very neatly, and it very yes. much feels like the newbie trying to, like, mm-hmm. make a good trying impression. Impress. 100%. Yeah. I also just found a picture of Sung with, like, short cropped hair. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Isn't I need to amazing? share this. <laughs> <laughs> He's so hot. <laughs> this is oh. the thing that also I'm mad about in the 7 remake, is that in the flashback with um yes oh my god (laughs) (sighs) in the flashback with Aerith we use the they use the exact same song model even though he Mm should have been like 10 or 12 years younger but then you see that they actually had um like they could have used his his crisis core version Mm-hmm. Like, why didn't they use his Crisis Core version? I- I- I'm confused because he absolutely had his hair in a short ponytail at that time. Yeah, like here, because I- he's hotter with the long hair. I'm sorry, you're like no, the you're not wrong. Hot. <laughs> you're not wrong, but from a continuity standpoint, it doesn't make sense. But people have modded the PC version to give him either his ponytail or that short hair. <sighs> One or <another>. anyway, <laughs> all, all, all I'm saying is Final Fantasy VII is peak aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> peak thirst between I mean, Mobius and Final guilty. Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah, oh, so bring back the backless armor main character, you cowards! <laughs> no kidding, I want that on my Warrior of Light stat. That yeah. version, <laughs> yes, please. I, I play a male Makote. If I can't play as that, there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so with this, we're going to be, uh, this is going to be a two-parter for it. So this is the first part of the Scott Ostoming thing. We'll get back to this and finish the other half of the Final Fantasy game. So going on. We're going to have to nine. go back to uh, eight also because we didn't <laughs> yeah, we that that. all. <laughs> <laughs> we get distracted too Final Fantasy easy. VII is really awesome. I and like then there's that. this other one that no one really pays attention to. And then there's nine, which is great. <laughs> When we get to one that I we don't pay attention eight. to, I will let you know which one it is because I forget it every time, and I'm it's an, my fault. I'm, I'm an s- eight hater, an eighter. 
an eighter. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna say something a little controversial. Ooh, <laughs> spicy. Sixteen. Yeah. Is in my top three Final Fantasies. Yeah, it's setting. amazing. Ah, it's so it's good. It's incredible. It's so That's not controversial. Good. That's just a no, Leo. You have not seen the internet <laughs> hating on sixteen. Really? Are they? Are oh they? my yeah. god! Massively. So I'm in a Facebook group for JRPG fans. Yeah. And. It is so polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But the amount of hate that I've seen is intense. And it's so ridiculous. There was actually one person who posted and was like, this is my favorite Final Fantasy. I love this. It's hands down one of the best that I've played. And someone was like, it's a prisoner of the moment thing. Like, this will change. And I'm, I even got involved and was like, what does it matter to you? Yeah, let like, this is not. Shit. <laughs> but, but somebody else came on and was like, prisoner of the moment, lol. How are you going to tell someone what their favorite game is? <laughs> <laughs> Props to that person. Whoever you yes, are, you're my favorite. I love that so much. And I was just like, yes, like, I would be so mad if someone was like, you know that like that game isn't that good right like i don't care mind your damn business <laughs> well you know Bitch. like maybe i'm just too affable or, or whatever but like i understand a lot of people don't care for 16 i guess and I, the, a lot of people didn't like 15 and i'm not saying that there wasn't reasons for both of those you know but if there those are your reasons if you don't like a game whether it's 15 16 7 whatever like dope don't like that game then but yeah i'm well, gonna so being in this group is really difficult but it also is difficult in the same way that working at gamestop was difficult mm -hmm, feel because that. oh my god the, even just the final fantasy stories that i have from working at gamestop yeah no, are I... intense much less the gaming the the amount of people who came in and were like can i get a real gamer to help me oh my <laughs> god yeah i did not have to deal <sighs> with that during my tenure which is bullshit that you had to uh, but I agree that the Final Fantasy stories alone are interesting, to delightful, say the least. yes, and delightfully bad. <laughs> yeah, so um, bad. But yeah, I just want to put it out there because I've seen so much hate for the game, like massive amounts of hate. Sixteen is in my top three. I like sixteen a lot. I'm just putting I it there. Like a lot of people yet, always so. hate on like new stuff, and then mm -hmm. once it's not new anymore, they're like, "Oh, I actually really like that game." Yeah, um, and there are there are, classic hype there are things mm -hmm. that aren't perfect about 16, but yeah, to me, problems. it is as close to perfect as a Final Fantasy has gotten in a long time. Right. So, with that being said, this will be uh, we'll be wrapping this up, and then we'll be doing part two of this at some point. Um, probably later this year. Uh, it'll probably appear later this year. Our next podcast episode, which I got to do math to figure this out, will be released on right now. October. Oh. <laughs> October right now. No, no, that's not how that works. October twentieth, where we will be talk discussing a game that's going to be coming out the week afterwards. Alan Wake two will be releasing afterwards. We'll be talking about Alan Wake during that episode. Woo. That being said, this is Gaming Theater Podcast. Uh, logging out. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye. 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 Gaming Theater Podcast is hosted, created, produced, and edited by Leo Garcia, the Geek Scorpio. Our music is A Drinking Game. Stock media provided by Stormwave Audio slash Pond5. Our cover art is by Adam Parker. You can find him at ParkerGFX on Twitter. If you want to send us some money to help with these episodes, you can do so at Patreon.com slash GamingTheaterPresents. Want to send support that doesn't hit your wallet? Please leave a review with wherever you hear your podcasts and share our podcast with your friends. It really helps out. Thank you for listening. <laughs>